Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. It has been a week of good news. The release of the latest CPI data showed that inflation has dropped again. As the earnings season gets underway, two out of the three big banks, namely JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, reported better than expected results. Meanwhile, Amazon reported a record single day sales during the first 24 hours of their prime day. This sent Amazon stock up by 2.7% last Thursday, its highest level since September 2022. On the bigger picture, both S&P 500 and Nasdaq hit a new 52-week high last week. Suddenly, the fear of more rate hikes have disappeared, and investors are hopeful of the economy once again. Everything seems to be looking rosy right now, but will the latest wave of earnings from the US companies shake things up? Do stay tuned as we discuss them all in this video. Last week, investor sentiment had a significant boost as inflation reports came in softer than expected. Basically, both CPI and PPI rose less than anticipated. Specifically for CPI, we had the slowest reading since March 2021. That's a big positive news for consumers, investors and of course, the Federal Reserve. With that, investors are super optimistic now as they are betting the Fed's aggressive monetary tightening campaign is reaching its peak. And it appears that the Fed is winning this inflation war without causing a recession in the US economy. To add on from what we have seen of the big bank's earnings, especially JP Morgan, it has also proven that the economy has been resilient so far as default rates are still historically low. As a result of this string of good news, both the S&P 500 and Nasdaq hit the highest intraday level since April 2022. Alright, a few things to look out for this week. Firstly, we will see more companies report their earnings. Some notable ones would be the major financial institutions and banks such as Morgan Stanley, Bank of America and Goldman Sachs. For me, in fact for a lot of people out there, the biggest name of the week would be none other than Tesla. Their earnings are due on Wednesday 19 July after the market closes. In case you are not aware, Tesla has already reported its Q2 deliveries, which easily beat analysts' estimate. But the reasons behind this solid delivery number are likely due to their price cuts and incentives. Therefore, investors would want to know how much those price cuts have affected Tesla's gross margins. Analysts do expect Tesla earnings to show a modest gain versus a year earlier though. We shall see. Overall, according to Factsheet, the expectations for this current earnings season are downbeat, as analysts are forecasting a roughly 7% year-over-year drop in S&P 500 earnings. This would actually mark the worst earnings season since the second quarter of 2020, when COVID was still rampant. Lastly, a special rebalance of the Nasdaq 100 index will take place on 24th July as Nasdaq looks to reduce the concentration of some of the heavyweight tech giants that contributed to nearly half of the index weight. In layman terms, they want to reduce the influence of these top tech giants, mainly the Magnificent Seven, you know, Apple, Google, Nvidia, Amazon, etc. This also means that investment funds that track the index are expected to be impacted by the rebalancing, as they need to adjust their portfolio by selling shares of those companies that have their weight reduced. This rebalancing will result in opportunistic buying and selling ahead of the officially rebalancing date. In fact, last week, some of these stocks are already beginning to trade to reflect the likely changes. We just don't know how much more impact to expect in the coming week, so watch them very closely, alright? Moving over to the technical analysis section, so last week I shared there was this bearish gravestone doji candlestick. Well, there's no hiding or anything as this candlestick did not play out. We basically printed two nice green candles right after that gravestone doji, which then invalidated the bearish thesis. I actually shared this in my last video too. Okay, so for this week, watch that long green dotted uptrend line. And as a recap of last week's video, I shared that the next resistance is at around 452 or 453 level. That's where March 2022's high was. Interestingly, SPY went as high as 451. Close enough. Therefore, this week, watch this area closely again. If SPY can break above this 452, 453 level, that's very bullish. 
and the next resistance will only come in at 460 and mind you this 460 level is very close to the all-time high of 468 so in my personal opinion if we can clinch this 460 level it is very high probability that we will punch through that 468 to create a new all-time high on the other hand, if the market decides to fall, watch for the level 443. This level was once a resistance, which has now turned into a support level. To add on, there is this gap between 443 and 445, which can act as a support too. Spy may just go down to fill this gap and then bounce up. But if it doesn't bounce and SPY starts closing below 443 level, there is only a relatively weak support level at 428 to 430 area. But yeah, here's the but. Despite being a so-called weak support zone, somehow this year, every dip has been bought by investors. Therefore, in situations like this, any support or demand zone will likely see buy the dip crop stepping in to push the price back up. All in all, again, something that I have been repeating, as long as the ultimate level of 420 holds any form of pullbacks, whether is it to 443 or 428, it doesn't matter to me at all. They are good buying opportunities in fact, not financial advice of course. Hopping over to Apple, okay if you recall last week I shared that so long as Apple does not break below 187, Apple is in this little consolidation phase. I also shared that the dynamic 20 moving average has served as a decent support for the last 4 months since March this year. Every time it closed below it for one day, it bounced back up quite immediately. So guess what, Apple tested their 187 and the moving average for 2 days and it did not close below this level. Then it started to move sideways aka consolidating just as per what I have shared. So guys I hope this can help me earn a like button from you, thank you. Okay for this week once again watch the 2 Fibonacci levels 187 and 195. Let's talk about the downside first. Well, similar analysis as last week, if 187 breaks, I think 180 would be a decent support as that is where the 50 moving average sits. Okay, something interesting to share. If you zoom out the chart, you will realize that Apple has been staying above this 50 moving average since January this year, which was roughly the start of this new bull run. And you know what they always say, Apple is a market indicator, so if Apple falls below this 50 moving average level, I would say the short term trend for Apple, the tech industry, and maybe even the broader market is bearish. But before that, the bears have to take down the 20 moving average and level 187 first. Alright, in terms of the upside, it's quite straightforward. If we break above 195, I think Momentum and FOMO investors will highly likely bring Apple to 200. So perhaps one can consider buying a $200 strike price call option on the condition that Apple reclaims 195 convincingly. Of course, this is not a financial advice. Okay, let's now dissect Tesla's chart. Tesla looks fascinating now because on one end, this looks like a mini bullish inverse head and shoulder pattern. But on the other hand, it can also turn out to be a mini bearish double top pattern. And what makes things even more interesting is that we have their earnings coming up which will likely shake things up. Okay, so post earnings, how do we see which pattern is playing out? What kind of confirmation are we looking for? Let's break them down. But before that, I really hope to grow this channel to 1000 subscribers soon. I am hitting my 2 year mark this December and based on the subscribers growth, I think I can't hit that subscriber count by December. So if you like my free content, please help to subscribe, like, comment or even share it with your friends. Meanwhile, other forms of support for this channel include signing up for this low-cost brokerage Weibo account using my referral link or buy me a coffee at USD $3. You can also buy me more than one coffee if you want. <laughs> Alright, back to business. For the bullish inverse head and shoulder pattern to play out, Tesla needs to break above 284-285 levels, aka the neckline. Because by doing so, it doesn't just break above this resistance area, it is also putting Tesla officially above the red dotted downtrend line. Honestly, good earnings should push us above this level quite easily and I think FOMO investors may just push Tesla to the psychological level of $300. 
Anyway, $300 level, in my opinion, is only a psychological resistance level. A heavier resistance will only come in at around 315. From the current level of 281 to 315, that's 12% upside. And we are talking about Tesla, so what's 12% man, right? But let's say Tesla's margin profits disappoint investors or investors simply just decided to sell the news, then Tesla will have difficulty breaking above the 284-285 level. When this happens, the double top pattern may potentially play out. It will be confirmed if we close below the downtrend line, which I believe will be tested again this week. And below this line, we are looking at 264 to 265 as the first target, where that little gap is. Filling this gap is nothing in my opinion. A decent support will only come in at around 253 to 255 area, where the first Fibonacci retracement level is, and where another support line sits. If this area breaks, then I will be excited, because the next target for bears would be the bigger gap between 235 and 242. I will definitely consider picking up some shares here, if it ever gets here again. I mean, the last time round when I added more shares was when Tesla was at 243. That trade is already up 15% right now based on Tesla's current price. Next up, let's talk about Google. Google is looking very bullish to me right now with that two green candles above the downtrend line. It basically broke out of this downtrend channel with decent volume and even closed above the critical level of 125. Therefore, this week will be very interesting. If Google can continue to close above 125 early of the week, I think we can expect to see 130s range soon. To make things better for bulls, the MACD just had a bullish cross. But to add on, if we have a bit of retracement, don't worry, it's fine. Just watch out for that purple trend line. Sometimes during a breakout, the stock may go back and retest the breakout zone or area. So it's not uncommon. The key thing right now is whether it bounces off that breakout zone or not. So let's say it doesn't bounce and Google falls back into that purple downtrend line, then the earlier bull thesis will be invalidated. Once back inside the downtrend channel, if weak momentum continues, don't be surprised if Google hits towards the bottom end of the channel, which is around 114 to 115 area. That area should offer some decent support because that's also where one of the Fibonacci retracement levels sits. The most critical support level sits at 111, where the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level is. Moving over to the options trade segment, so last Friday, 14th July, I opened a new trade and it was a little risky one. Basically, I sold a covered call on Tesla with a strike price of 385 expiring on 18 August. And in case you don't know, covered call is a slightly bearish move. Some of you may think that I must be crazy to be bearish in a bull market, and also wonder what happened to my bullish view of the market. Well, well, here's the explanation. I am generally still bullish about the market, but specifically for Tesla, after it hit its recent high of 284, it has been floating below this level as well as the long-term red dotted downtrend line. Since Tesla has not been able to break above it, I decided to sell a cover call as I am of the view that this trend line will continue to pose as a resistance at least for a while. But guess what? I sold this cover call on Friday at the start of the day, but then Tesla staged an intraday rally and closed above that downtrend line. So my trade was like positive for a while, and then next moment it became negative. But for those who followed my video, you will know that this small little swing is nothing. You can check out my last video on how my Tesla trade swung 1000%. Anyway, come this week, I will watch the downtrend line as well as 284-285 level closely. As shared earlier, Tesla will likely retest the downtrend line. If it goes back down, great. If it doesn't, and if it breaks above 285, that's very bullish. Above 285, there are a few important resistance levels, which is around 300 and 315. And for Tesla to hit my strike price of 385, this means it will go past April 2022's high. So these few resistance levels, 300, 315, and the final level 385 will be my so-called protection levels. 
This is also why I chose a strike price that is super far away to reduce the probability of Tesla hitting that level in about one month's time. And oh, to also share, I sold this covered call when Tesla was at 280. Hence, for Tesla to hit 385 from the point I sold the contract, it means Tesla has to rally 37.5%. That's on top of its crazy run up recently. To add on, by hitting 385, it also means Tesla would have rallied more than 270% since its low in January this year at 102. I mean, from 102 to 385, that's more than three times return. Not saying it's impossible, it's Tesla we are talking about, right? And look at Nvidia, it really has been crazy. With that said, in my view, the possibility is not as high as, say, Tesla hitting 300 or 315. 385 is still a distance away, you get what I mean? At the end of the day, options trading is all about probability. Okay, hope you have learned something today. Anyway, as the market continues to go up, thought to also share these two cash secure puts that I sold on Google, and they are all in the green now as I write this up trend. It's looking good namely because Google broke above the downtrend channel that I shared earlier in the TA section. Actually, when Google had that breakout, I placed a cash secure put trade again, but it didn't get filled. This means short term wise, I am leaning towards bullish on Google. Until of course it falls below 120 again or back into that downtrend channel. Ok, some quick end thoughts for this video. So earlier on, I have shared that analysts are forecasting a year over year drop in S&P 500 earnings, aka expectations have been lowered. With this, does it mean it's easy for companies to beat the estimates, and that the market will continue to rally in post-earnings stage, just like the previous two quarters? Well, that's definitely possible. But my honest opinion is earnings season is always a wild card for individual stocks and the broader market. And what I have always been sharing is that don't need to predict whether the market will go up or down before the earnings. Watch how the market moves right after the earnings. Let the market makers go first, then we follow the direction, whether is it up or down. But of course, I know it's a bit of human nature to want to predict or maybe anticipate what's gonna happen next. In fact, I myself do wonder if the market will continue its bull run to all-time high in the second half of this year. Alright then, let's take a look at some of the catalysts. Firstly, in my view, if the big guns don't disappoint too much in terms of their earnings and forecasts, the market should hold up or even rally a little. Next, it's the inflation. We are at 3% now, which is 1% away from the Federal Reserve's target at 2%. If it continues to decline, then of course, the market will likely cheer about it and rally. This then brings me to the next point, which is Fed's rate hike campaign. The market is expecting another rate hike this month and maybe another one before the end of the year to curb inflation. So if nothing in the economy breaks and with the market pricing in this 1-2 to two rate hikes, then yes, the bull run could potentially continue with some modest pullbacks here and there of course. Finally, if the labour market and the economy continue to be as resilient as the first half of the year and there is no recession, then there is almost no reason for the market to crash, unless of course there is a black swan event. Okay, now let's play the role of devil's advocate. What if, just what if, any of those catalysts turn against us? Say, inflation level out and stays around 3%, plus minus a little bit. What is the Fed gonna do? Will this affect their rate hike campaign? And even if they stop raising the rates after two more rate hikes, what does it mean for the economy and company's profits if Fed doesn't cut the rates and leave it at the current rate till next year? And what if next quarter's earnings disappoint as a result of this high interest rate environment? What if unemployment rate goes up and what if a recession hit US? Well, the message that I want to bring across it, it's nice to have so many good news coming in week by week, month by month. I am so glad that my portfolio is up more than 50% year to date and that I have recovered all my paper loss since 2022's bear market. In fact, I am in the profit zone now. But that being said, I always think it's good to have that 10% bearishness in me just so that I don't become a full 100% bull and then get a shock when the market corrects itself or decline by a significant bit. 
So how about you? What are your thoughts of the current market? Would love to hear some views from the viewers. Comment down below, alright? And remember to help out the channel by tapping the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you.